You got to tune to Whoop Up KEXP 90.3 FM live on the web at KEXP.org. I'm Derek Mazzoni, your DJ and host. And we've got Dengue Fever in the studio. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, great. Do you guys still get crap for Dengue Fever for the name? Are there people still like, what's up with that? We do when we go to Cambodia. They're like, why? Such a bad thing. You know, why would you name yourself that? And what do you say? Um... We just say, you know, uh, it's some sick kind of American humor that you don't really understand, and they, I don't know. They get it then? It's like, ah, oh, Americans? Maybe. I don't know. You haven't changed, so hey. <laughs> we'll love to hear some music, please. Okay. Fever, live in the studios of KXP in our new studios. Thank you for being here. Thank you.
thank you for having us again. <laughs> Tell me, um, this is great. This is like our third time, maybe our fourth time. So yeah. we can be relaxed with each other. It's not that like, hey, I don't know you. You don't know me. You're going to ask me something that it's going to destroy my social media. No, it's like coming home. Coming home. Coming home. Um, but tell me a bit, uh, what's that song about? That song, this, this director who was making a documentary on um, this horrible thing that happened in Indonesia in the 60s when there was like a coup within the military and then they kind of blamed it on like the communists oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the u.s kind of was like yeah let's go ahead and blame it on the communists <laughs> and so they went ahead and like people like three four generations away from that are still like not being able to go to decent schools or get good jobs and so that song was like that communist party's theme song and it was about like picking weeds because they were so hungry that they just go out into the fields and pick weeds to eat and make soups from um, that normally the animals would just be eating. So what was the movie? It's called like 30 Years of Silence or okay. 40 Years of Silence. I know the story yeah. and um, it's one of those movies that I'm like, this is going to bum me out for like a year if I watch it's, this right now. It's, it's good to, you know, it's good to... What made you, co what compelled you to, uh, to record and put it out? Well, they, they approached us and asked us to cover the song. Oh, perfect. Yeah, for the film. Perfect. What was that like? Um, it was a pleasure. <coughs> you yeah. saw the film and you're like, okay, I want to do this and be part of this? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Um, so you guys have been touring. You were just in Portland. You're playing tonight. This is awesome. You're going to be on. Uh, you're playing tonight at the Crocodile Cafe. Mm -hmm. And then where are you going after that? Um, Bellingham. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, Bellingham. The Pacific Northwest loves you guys. It's always fun. It's, I mean... We were just in Cambodia like a week and a half ago, mm -hmm. and that was great too. But like the equipment is always kind of, you never know what you're going to end up playing through. Mm -hmm. It's always like some old PV amp that like works for the beginning of the show and then like cuts out and weird stuff. But anyway, the West Coast is always just such a pleasure. It's the place. It's beautiful. Everyone's nice. Good food. Don't you guys love it? Sounds like you're complaining about Cambodia. <laughs> no, no, okay, That's sorry, like, I'm not complaining about Cambodia. <laughs> it's one of my, it's like one of my, the highlights for touring for me is hitting Cambodia and it's, it's like t touring back in time into the old west or something like that. And it's, we always get such a warm welcome because Nimal and all her family and all her friends in Cambodia are so Excited glad that us. we're there yeah. and appreciative and it's beautiful. So yeah. you guys are a big thing in Cambodia or kind of underground or what, how, how are you received in Cambodia? Bigger than Jesus Christ. <laughs> Um, is Jesus God. big in Cambodia? No. No, <laughs> no he, he said che exactly. cheese whiz. He said cheese, cheese whiz. whiz. See, I, I thought we had this. We had this conversation just a minute ago. We're not going to say anything that's going to cause controversy. Oh, so. <laughs> I tend to not listen. Um, we're we're popular. I think I think the most I think the the best thing we've done there, at least that I've seen, is kind of brought the expat and the Cambodian community together a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but yeah, a lot of people come to our shows, and it's it's always fun and mayhem. And like Zach said. Like the stage is falling apart and the amps are shaking, but somehow everything just seems to just happen, you know. Yeah, it's, um, some fans uh, flew from uh, Tokyo come to see us and uh, another country come to see us, just come to see Dengue View in Cambodia. So Perfect. Yeah. I think we've for played for the most people we've ever played for in <laughs> Cambodia. <laughs> yeah. Like it was probably about 10,000 people, like as far as you could see, it was just kind of like a cultural ambassador, or like artistic cultural ambassador tour that we did with the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. And then we played like just this free show. And it was just like, it seemed like a mile of just people. Are there bands like yours forming? Is there this, this interest in this music? Or um, We saw this, this really great couple perform in Siem Reap where Angkor Wat is. Mm -hmm. uh, they're called uh, Miss Saravan. Sarawan and Joe Wrigley. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, they're, her voice is incredible. Nimal sang with her live. And uh, there, was a, there was a music festival that we were part of in Siem Reap. And I, uh, I brought our parents, Zach, Zach and I are brothers. And uh, some of my folks came out to Cambodia for the first time, which is cool because they're in their 70s. And, um, yeah, and it was... Um, yeah, that she was, uh, other than Nimal, she was like that they were the, and some kids that we played with in Batambong that were really good musicians um, is, uh, yeah, that was really good stuff. And, and there's also a recording studio that we were taken to, uh, what was it called? 
like 360. Road Studio 360. Studio 360. So they built. They have a. They have a really uh, decent room and some good equipment now. So wow. We're talking about maybe recording there sometime. That's awesome. That's awesome. You guys have an amazing story. We'd love to hear some more music, please. Dengue Fever, Warp Up Gig Speed tonight at the Crocodile Cafe. Yeah, this song's called Uku. <laughs>
dengue fever. I'm Bob Pop and KXP. Thank you. Tell me what that song is about. Uku. Somebody. Nimal wrote the lyrics to that one. Yeah, but uh. Nimal, what's it about? Uh, in about the girl was go away from the family mm -hmm. and the girl from the north side, and try to come to uh, the big town to make some money to find a good job to bring uh, to help people in the in the in the countryside. And but uh, one day she just missed her family and um, think about uh, the new year and celebrating, but she don't have a chance to go. But she's just missing her family in the uh, countryside. But one day she will come to to her family. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Think Beautiful. <laughs> um, and so uh, Zach and Ethan, you brought your seven year old parents to Cambodia. Yeah. So um, that must have been interesting. Yeah, it was. Um, they they had an incredible time. They're like 73, 74, and uh, they hadn't gone out of the country other than Mexico for forty years. So. Um, my wife and I held their hand, and, and they had a good adventure. We took them to Thailand too, and uh, yeah, they only you know they only got sick <laughs> twice. <laughs> hey, what are you gonna do? That's my first time. That's why. <laughs> Dengue fever live in the studios. You're playing at the Crocodile Cafe tonight, and uh, 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 you guys were on a couple of labels. Now you have Tuk Tuk Records. Um, is releasing records that important to you guys still, or is it just like? touring and playing out doing videos like you got to do it all you know you got to <laughs> keep pushing yourself and moving forward and writing new songs so yes releasing records it's still there yeah okay just there is curious because you're an interesting band and there's like you guys could do festivals you could do you guys could do museums you know there's there's an interesting story there so you have a lot of more opportunities than like hey we're a rock band you know? yeah that's one of the neat things that we don't have like this you know really narrow group of people that like to come to our shows it's like sometimes there's like one time in washington dc a older cambodian woman a grandma jumped up on stage and started singing with us wow and she turned her kids on to us and then just the other day in um sacramento a kid brought his mom to us and so it was it's pretty neat there's like whole families that come to the shows yeah 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 they're and always the best dressed yeah i mean we play you know we play the sticky, sticky stickers everywhere and couches that you don't even want to sit down on, punk rock kind of places. And then we'll play uh, museums where people aren't even allowed to have a beer. That's perfect. Yeah. We would love to hear some more music, please. Dengue Fever. Only if I...
makes her laugh and keeps her from falling. Dengue fever in the studio's okay XP. Let's dig a little deeper in that song. <laughs> is, that, is that something autobiographical? or? Uh... My wife wrote that chorus. <laughs> okay, that's good. I want to know more. She's like, you're going overseas and flirting with girls and catching diseases. And it rhymes. And then at the same time, no, wait, you know, wait. there was like a friend of mine, an ex-friend of mine who was like kind of taking her out to dinner. This is before we got married. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know... Going, hey, you know, I don't know if I know if you're not doing anything, maybe you want to like go catch a movie or something. Got it. This is so, a true story. Yeah. <laughs> ex friend, you have an ex friend. I love it. Yeah, and you know what? I even didn't even really care that much about that, you know. But there were other reasons that we're not friends anymore. I got it. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Secrets. Um, uh, let's introduce the band, please. Oh, introduce the band. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm Zach Holtzman. Play guitar and do some singing. I'm David Rollicky, and I play horns. I'm Paul Smith, and I play drums. I'm Cena Williams. I play bass guitar. Hi, I'm Ethan Holtzman, and I'm playing keyboards. Hi, I'm Chalmi Mul. I'm a lead singer. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Um, so for people who don't know much about the band or check about the first time, how did the band come together? How did this thing? This has been going on for a while now, so it's working. But what was the start? I got a crazy phone call from Zach and Ethan. Or Zach, who I was really close friends with at the time, he's like, "Hey, man, we got all these Cambodian singers lined up for this, you know, this crazy gig we're playing. We, do you want to come and play bass?" I'm like, "I'm in a band." And like, "Well, well, can you just like help us out?" And so Zach came and picked me up and took me down to Long Beach, which is just outside of LA, mm -hmm. and um, and we had a rehearsal with about ten horrible singers, and Dimal was not there. And afterwards, we we're driving home, going, "Oh man," I'm like, "Are you sure this is a good idea?" and and then Zach told me about Chomney Mall. You want to take over from here? Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, my brother, Ethan, and I were going to all the different clubs, kind of searching for singers. Why? So well, Because we were both, Ethan went to Cambodia in the 90s and kind of collected a bunch of tapes. Mm -hmm. Actually, okay, that's where the name of the band came from, too. His traveling companion got stuck, bitten by a mosquito and came down with dengue fever. Okay. And when they were rushing him to the hospital... The driver was blasting this really cool music, Cambodian rock and roll from the 60s, and that's how he heard about it. As he's stressed out as his friend is dying in a cab. They're so, yeah. big. so you're focusing on the music instead. He said, <laughs> why did I ever come to this godforsaken country? Exactly. <laughs> he was Scottish. <laughs> so uh, I heard of the music on my own, and um, when Ethan heard me playing some of the music, we started talking like, whoa, we should maybe like form a band kind of based on this original music. This is like 15 years ago. Yeah, you know? I know. So, um, so that was when we started going to the different nightclubs and kind of searching for somebody. Just the singer, but yeah. you weren't playing. I mean, this music wasn't being played in the clubs, or was it? Uh, that, no. No, that, okay. Oh, I mean, a lot of, um, the few songs that we cover, most of them are written by Sin Sisamuth. And he's a national treasure in Cambodia. Mm -hmm. So they still perform his songs, but he wrote a lot of ballads. And they're mostly performed in the kind of Asian pop sound, mm -hmm. you know, with the heavy chorus yeah. kind of vibe and kind of a croony singer. Um, and some of his more humorous songs um, are still really popular, where like duets and things like that. But they're all done not really in, in a raw fashion. Like we, the music that we kind of were loving and digging mm -hmm. was the sound, was the older sound. So I don't think anybody was, was playing the music in the way that we played that music. And, and also, no one was, um, you know, the original idea was not even to do those cover songs and was to start a band based on that. Yeah. And um, Nimal had never been in a band that created original material, so it was kind of hard to, to get our songs across in the beginning. And so we were like, let's just play these covers for now and we'll just start working on our originals. And so over the years, I mean, it was the first album covers. The rest of them, we've just been 
we kind of you know graduated to the original concept, and so. And 15 years later, here you are. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> you guys don't do it easy, do you? It's just like. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <clears throat> yeah, you know, like dog years. How they say it's like seven years for every year a dog's alive. I think band years are probably like 20 years for every year that a band stays together. No doubt, no doubt, no <laughs> doubt. Dengue fever, would love to hear some more music, please. Uh, all right, Cement. what are we doing? Cement? Cement slippers. Okay. Cement slippers. <clears throat> Everything at the beach except the water, the sand, and the sun. just get better and better. Thank you. That's awesome. Thanks for being Thank here, you. playing at the Crocodile tonight at uh, Bellingham. Do you know what venue? The Shakedown. The Shakedown. I've heard yeah. of the Shakedown. Yeah. Shakedown is uh, tomorrow night. 
Tomorrow night. Tomorrow, yes. yes, tonight you're at the Crocodile. Crocodile tomorrow night, tonight, yes. Tomorrow yes. night in Bellingham. This is Wopop KXP 90.3 FM. I'm Derek Mazzoni, DJ and host. I want to thank Jim Beckman, Scott Holpinen, Justin Wilmore, Melissa Wax, Kevin Suggs, and Milton Sagahon. Keep it tuned. KXP 90.3, where the music matters. Ooh. Thank you, Thank Derek. you. Yeah. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.